Hey everybody, it's Miss Amy at the Grass Valley Library. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Random Acts of Science. We'd like to thank Nevada County Media for doing the recording and lending, lending us their studio um, to do this work in today. You can also see this on their website, um, on the, on the um, Children's Educational Channel, this and all the other Random Acts of Science videos. So today though, we are gonna be talking about architecture. So in a former life, I was an architect. Um, I really enjoy thinking about structure Structures and architecture and engineering and the ancient Greeks are the ones who really kind of uh, moved us forward in the field of architecture as far as how they design their buildings. So before the ancient Greeks started building um, there was a lot of massive structures, a lot of stacking of stones and masonry and um, some, some really heavy massive structures. What the Greeks invented was a system of columns which are the upright members in a building and beams which are the ones that lay across them um, that let them build more open spaces and let them kind of span uh, longer distances. So that is called the post and lintel construction. So in this experiment we're going to find out how that works and why it works. Um, and in our case the posts are going to be the cups and the lintels are going to be these cookie sheets or a piece of cardboard. So let's talk about what you need from home. You're going to need some paper cups. Um, Probably 12 is a good number. You might want to try more if you have them and try some different things with those. And then you're going to need two cookie sheets or pieces of cookie sheet sized cardboard. Either one of those things would work. So we're going to start out talking about what happens um, with forces. So if we have a post, let's say this cup is a post and we put a force on it. Let's say I were to stand on the cup. So all my weight is coming straight down on this paper cup. Do you think the paper cup could carry that load? Probably not. Well, I tried it just to be sure, and here's what happened. So, how can I get a paper cup to hold my weight? Well, what the Greeks did was they spread my weight, or the weight that they needed to hold up, um, over many posts, and then they spanned across those posts with a beam called a lintel. So, post and lintel construction. So we're going to recreate that, that right now. Because we're going to need to stand on the cookie sheet, um, we're going to have two rows at least um, of cups. So I'm going to set six cups out. I'm going to use the bigger cooker sh cookie sheet and set it on top. OK. Do you think that would hold my, would hold my weight? Let's take it out and find out. So what's happening there is that the force coming down on this lintel or this cookie sheet is spread out in all directions and it's each one of those cups is only taking, you know, one sixth of the load, just a part of the load, and they are able to handle that. So if you got that far and you want to keep trying some fun things, you could also try to put a second story on your structure, add another row of lintels or posts, <laughs> and then take the other cookie sheet or piece of cardboard, set it on top. Um, you might want someone to hold your hand so you don't fall over and see if you can stand on that. Or maybe you can have two smaller children stand on that. Maybe an adult could stand on that. Or you could pile books on it and see how many books you can, um, you can hold with this structure. You could do less cups or more cups. You could have a good time just trying to figure out like what works with the weights that I have and how do I hold them up? How many cups do I need? So anyway, kind of a fun experiment in engineering and architecture. So thank you so much for joining me this morning or today for Random Acts of Science and we will see you again soon.